Cardinal Coffee. So here we are. We're here. What are we doing? Oh, I don't know. I think we got to build some walls. I mean, it looks like the next thing to do, right? We got a floor. <laughs> there you go. hey, we need walls. This is deductive got, reasoning. John's got the shot. Yeah, yeah. He's got the shot. We're contemplating what's wow, happening. Wow, that's us thinking about what we're going to do. And I think the answer is walls. <laughs> we got our stock of studs right here. And that's enough to do the master bedroom wing, 93 inch studs. Something interesting here, if you're new to building, if you walk into the lumber supplier and ask for eight foot studs, like to build a wall, they're gonna probably give you 96 inch studs. Ooh. We use these pre-cut, that's why they're painted on the end so you can tell. Yep. These are pre-cut 93 inch studs. You add a top and bottom plate, then you got 96 inches. And we're gonna add two top plates. Yeah, so we end up with 97 and a half, but this works out for standard drywall, like four foot drywall inside two pieces. Arlo, why are these called studs? Do you know? He doesn't know. Dude, Siri knows how why to Why do people house. even watch our channel? You just ask Siri. He just asked Siri what a stud is, and she told him how to build a whole house. <laughs> Generally meaning prop or support. A wow. prop or support. Stud equals prop or support. Man, there's so much we could say about laying out walls. We can't say it all, but what I will say is we're laying these out on 16 inch center and that's gonna line up with these floor joists. So yeah. that if we had mechanicals or something that need to come up through a, a floor joist bay, they would end up coming up on the stud bay. So what you're saying is that the layout on the floor and on the walls is the same? Hopefully, that would be ideal. It doesn't have to be. The floor designed to hold the load either way. Uh, the second thing I'm gonna say is there are a lot of ways you could just mark the layout. I'm hooking on the end, and that's the end of the structure, the complete end. And we're gonna want a stud on center on 16, so you could mark, you know, one side with an X. You could mark both sides with an X in the middle and three quarters on each side. And- That's or, what I like. Yeah, or you could even, I've seen people just mark center and just sort of eyeball center with the stud. So we want the stud centered on that. So I like, you can see the edge of the stud better. So I can mark the edge. And that, that particular one there, I've heard it called set ahead. So you, ah. you mark there and the stud is, stud is set ahead. I see. There's a lot of ways you could say that it or do sense. it, but you know, we do really a combination of all of them. As long as we see a mark and an X, we know it's a stud. Yeah, right? and layout, man, I get a lot of questions about layout. It can be hard to understand yeah. if you don't have any construction background or experience. So uh, it seems like it's tricky, but really it's not. It's, it's not. Don't, yeah, don't see, be see, look, tricked. Look at the tape. The 16s already are highlighted. They're in red, see? Yep. See that? Yep. And and the two foots, <laughs> they're pretty easy too. They have a big black arrow, two yes. foot, four foot. And if you're doing 19.2s, they have a diamond. So you don't have to do any real thinking. You just have to know a little bit about your tape measure. So we have a video about tape measures and all the different things they do. We also have a video about layout and, and a lot more about it than this one minute if you're interested in watching that as well. I think it's called the best layout video ever. <laughs> that's of course what I it named is. it. <laughs> of course so it is. So I don't know if it is, but I thought that's a great name. I like it. Gotta turn that thing on. It was on. <laughs> there, I don't know, maybe it was. Now you're ready. I don't know. Oh yeah? The what the heck? The There's no nails in it. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Man. Hey Ray, shove this whole thing and we'll stand on the ground and nail this. Yeah, 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 like that. Oh yeah, wow. That's it. Good? That's, That's perfect. Uh, so good. Ergonomic. All right, round three. Okay. Can we shoot a stud? Oh, well, I got nails. So you got to put them in. Oh, Man. Oh my gosh. Dude, this How do we get anything built? This carpentry <laughs> stuff. Yeah. This yeah. carpentry <laughs> stuff is. I remember my first time building a house. It was kind of cool. Where's All right. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Now we're building it. Yeah. Three nails. There you go. And we'll go two in that one. Yep. Wow, that was painful. That was, was so painful. It was like, it's a lot of stuff to remember. <laughs> Are you sure that you're not 40? <laughs> I'm so close. 
But no, I'm not as old as you. You know, something with this nailing, it's actually good to angle the nails a little bit if you if you can. Opposing each other. It just uh -huh. gives it extra grip. Okay. You uh, know, like alternating yeah. angle actually kind of binds them up to where it can't pull straight yeah. out. And, and I'll say this, you may hear this many times during this whole framing process. We got a lot to go. We don't spill all the beans at once. But we're using three nails for these studs. And that's because of the diameter of the nails. Yeah. That's the code. Uh, nail shanks come in different thicknesses. And the ones we're using, you need three. There you go. Back it in. Insulated. Oh, 463. Okay. Jono's managing material here. He's trying to not use all the good ones on this part of the house. Oh, what other headers we might have coming after this wall. I know that we have a couple more shorties, one, two, on either side of the master bed over there, and I think those are going to be the 33s Okay. as well. So you, you can have a couple shorties okay. to burn up somewhere. I got those right there. Dude, you got to cut my hair, I think. <laughs> I see that. It's it looks pretty ugly. It's getting out of control, man. Do you ever comb it or wash it, though? What? Why? Are you supposed to? <laughs> Yeah, I work all week. It's not like I'm going anywhere. I just shower on Saturdays. I bet your wife loves that. Yeah. Last night she comes in our room. She's like, oh my gosh, what stinks in here? I was like, that's my feet, babe. Sorry. That thing's covered in dust. It's almost like you laid it down on the sub I did. Floor. Actually, I just laid it right there. With the camera facing down in the yeah. dust. It's almost like you did that just then. Static. So again, this may get repeated because we're going to be framing walls for several days. And I know I've said it in a bunch of videos, but we like to chalk a line and then pull the plate down to that line and then we tack it to the floor with toenails that I peel off so that it stays put and straight. And also these work like hinges. When you stand the wall up, it mm -hmm. doesn't slide off of the floor and yeah. fall on the ground. You might even say that doing this step right here is pivotal. Yeah, uh, you might say that. Yeah, you did it's critical, say that. <laughs> pivotal. So pan down here. You can see our chalk line that's three and a half inches in from the framing. From the framing. And hey, be careful because this, this plywood's in by a little bit. Make sure you measure from the actual outside of the framing. Yeah, watch out. And then let's do a toenail. It's at a very shallow angle or is that steep? I don't know. I call it steep. Okay, we don't want to pop out this side over here. So I'm just going to do that. Leave the head out so we can pull that once the wall is stood. And I'm just going to do that about every two feet down the wall. Ready to sheet. Second half of getting this thing ready, we'll ready. after that is to square I'm the wall. Ready. I'm not ready. We gotta measure. Pull it. a diagonal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My tape's too short. Wait, I got, got a 16 foot tape. All right, I got 280, three quarters, 280.7. I got, I got all right, 280 and uh, 7 eighths. Okay, come to me a little bit. Well, do you have this pin down yet? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm like 13. I'm 13. 28013. Done. All right, tack the top plate. job thanks hey, you shot the nails in the right place i did yep look at that so number one they hit into the floor joist yeah. instead of just the sheathing number two they're not out here somewhere in case you drill some kind of plumbing or there's nothing here but if you had to drill some kind of mechanical through here they're not you know you're not going to hit a nail you never seen an electrician or a plumber so ticked when they mess up their hundred dollar huge drill bit on your on your nail yeah Hey, there's what are you about doing? a million of them in here. Hey, air guy, what are you doing? Why hey, man. Do my job? I'm just shooting some nails here. What's the big deal? I was shooting. What you doing, Jay? I'm going to shoot some galvies through this plywood into our sill plate. That's going to just hold it all together, baby. <laughs> wow, look at that. Woo, hold it all together. All right, let's get some of that action right there. Galvies, check. You're shooting those things like we got them for free, bud. 
Dude, you can't be too safe. I didn't pay for him. <laughs> no, honestly, that's that's what holds the house down to the foundation. So yeah. I don't like the skip. And just so everyone knows that if I would have made him farther apart, he would have told me to put them closer together. So it doesn't really matter what we do. They just tell us the opposite. So. We're laying out these plates and we're usually thinking about all kinds of stuff while we're doing that because it's not exactly detailed on the plan. I drew the plan, so I'm not complaining. Therein lies uh, the problem. <laughs> lies the problem. One thing here is we've got a door opening here this way and I've got a window opening here this way. And I spaced this just on site, the, the spacing. And I did that much so that if they wanted to fit like a four gain light switch box in this section of wall, it's possible. Um, Sometimes it's not possible the way the house is designed. There's not enough space available. Yeah. But in this case, there is. So we're going to leave just enough for that. Yeah. And then that's that's how we determine how much space to Let leave. Let me say this. There's a deck out here. There's a door to the deck. There's a window on each side of the door. There's going to be a light outside on the deck. Where's the switch for the deck light going to be? Well, well, I think right there well, now. <laughs> exactly. If you didn't leave room for that, it would be somewhere else, not on your path out to the deck. So that'd be a problem. Could be. We pretty much like to get all of our framing members laid into place here based on the layout. This one right here though, we've got a pack out of four members. And if I just went ahead and nailed all the ends on here, I wouldn't be able to nail each member to the next in the middle. So what we gotta do is actually remove the out outside ones here or start from one side and work across so that each member is nailed to the next one. Yeah. Now what are you gonna do? You got it? <laughs> that was the blankest stare I've ever seen on your face. <laughs> Come on, my arms are hurt. Watch out. <laughs> You're right. That was all the capacity. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think the key is the blank stare on your face while you're doing it. There it is. That's how you do it. <laughs> Who's got the extra large pepperoni? Anybody have an extra large pepperoni? Are you just refusing to carry plywood ah. in any sort of normal way today? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I know a question a lot of people are going to be asking. Oh no, what is it? Why is the sheathing stop short? Why didn't we go to the top of the wall? We ran out. No, we didn't. No, I'm just kidding. So well, we're still developing our plans for the way that the end of the rafter tail is going to be cut. It's going to be a two by 12. The end of the tail might have a vertical cut or a plum cut, we would call it, that extends up the vertical face of the outside of the wall. And given the chance, we would like to sheathe across the wall surface, across the end of the vertical cut on the rafter to connect everything down together. Wow, that was a good answer. That's that was all. a phenomenal answer. <laughs> yeah. Better than I would have came up with. Everybody knows that. One, two, three, go. And one, two, three, go. I want to see your doctor. <laughs> Are you blank? Oh, yeah. oh, it went blank. Yes. What's it say, Ray? 54, it's going down. Urgent low. More Skittles. <laughs> We're just looking at this door that's going to be here. I've yeah. got on the plans as a single glass, full glass. Right, right. It's just a really nice view that way. This is the dining room we're standing in. Oh, okay. Don't you think maybe do a double, like a patio doors, double full glass? The only problem with a door here, glass, of course, is if you're looking out, you can see into the master bedroom. But I mean, you'll be able to see in there with a single glass door. Yeah. I think originally I had no door here just to kind of make this more private. Right. But I was realizing this is, a great view this way so what do you think i need to think on it i hate putting in double doors <laughs> <laughs> that's the only problem they are terrible french doors oh man yeah. can, can anybody give me an amen i mean putting in a french door sucks. yeah yeah well they're not bad but it's the doors themselves yeah 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 no i know i know i'm sorry uh, <laughs> but yeah we all like them less than in fact i haven't put mine in yet but it's going in this week and i've been procrastinating on it <laughs> oh I, I don't doubt it Sorry. since there's a little uncertainty we'll just frame it for a double door 
If we get one, great. If not, we'll just box it in, make it a single. Okay, I think it's a good plan. We got a little situation here. This wall is pinned in between these other existing walls now. We're gonna check it for square and sheath it like normal, with the exception that we're not gonna sheath the very ends so that we can overlap it to the outsides of the end of these walls the that are sheathing. already standing. Yeah, the sheathing, so it's all interconnected. But what if this is out of square? Well, we can't change it because we got no room. It's literally tight and tight. So if it was out of square, or if you build one like this and it's out of square, I would stand the wall up without sheathing and then just plumb these two outside corners and then sheath it in place. Otherwise, you're gonna build it crooked, stand it up, it's gonna be crooked forever. Mm. That'd be bad. What's the number? I don't know. You ain't got his readers on. 252 and a quarter. Okay, 252, one quarter. Yeah, I'm getting better than that. Everybody can ignore that whole last thing Jamie just said. Hey, <laughs> that just means the foundation's square. Uh oh. Yeah, that just means we built a per perfect foundation. Well, no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, <laughs> those numbers are identical. <laughs> A lot of people are familiar with this zip system sheathing, the green stuff we're using on the walls. This stuff's a little different though. We're using an R sheathing. The R stands for R value, like insulated. And it has a half inch rigid foam on the inside. And that helps to prevent thermal bridging so that heat doesn't go through the studs, the wood of your studs to the outside of the house or vice versa. So it helps insulate the house a whole lot extra. And you can get this stuff with an inch rigid foam, two inches of rigid foam. This is just a half inch which is an R3. And I'll give a special thanks to Huber again for providing us with these materials. They are a great company. We've loved their products. The zip system overall saves a lot of time because you don't have to do a moisture barrier or a house wrap on the whole outside of this place, which usually covers up all of the stud lines on your sheathing. So then you have to remark them to shoot your siding and all that stuff. So uh, that's what we're using here. Uh, we really like the zip system. It's faster and I think better. And that's why we like to use it. Hey, what's a pirate's favorite sheathing? Oh, Arr, sheathing. <laughs> it says right there. No, That's just... terrible. Arr. Dude, where'd you find this guy, bro? How are you guys related? There's no way. No way. <laughs> All right, are we ready? You ready, set, go. Okay, watch your headers when you get the tips up there in the corner. Yeah, watch your header there, right? Oh, we're good, we're good. We're good, so good. One other thing about this zip system R sheathing is that you tape the joints with zip tape, but you have to have the zip tape on the job site to do that. And I forgot to order it with the zip board. Man, that's so, kind of a rookie move not to yeah. order the tape. I know. Well, I, I kind of ordered it and then I had them deliver this early with our floor system yeah. just because I wanted to stack it over in the corner. And then I forgot to order it with the wall material. So mm. they have it. It's just not here. Mm. So we'll get up and I'll do that on a ladder later. Roll the tape. Here's the deal, Jono. It's 222, and you've cut up all the studs. And it's my birthday, so I think we should go home. Okay. Hey, thanks for building with us today. I hope you learned a lot about building walls. And if you didn't learn enough, don't worry because we're gonna be building walls for several more days, and we didn't wanna spoil it all in one episode, right? That's right, we saved something for we you. We saved a lot. So make sure to tune in for our next video. See you next time. <laughs>